Hey everybody, welcome to the channel and check this out. This is an inline fuse that has circuit protection. So in case you blew a fuse in the field, you don't have to worry about, oh, did I bring a fuse? And today I'm gonna show you how to build this. First thing you're gonna wanna do is go to thingiverse.com and download Ham Radio Dudes Box. If you don't have a 3D printer, this file will eventually be available on my Etsy store. If you don't have a 3D printer, you could also go to your local library. Many libraries do have 3D printers available, and if you give them the file, they'll print it. In this case, I used ASA filament with my Bamboo X1 carbon. Next, if you printed this, remove the supports that printed with the box. Grab the rest of our materials and we need to start with circuit breakers. Today I'll use 25 amp circuit breakers and next up we're going to need our power pole connectors. I have two sets of them. Next we have ring connectors and these are 10 to 12 gauge AWG ring connectors and what we notice is they fit very nicely on the circuit breaker terminals. And finally we need two pieces of 12 gauge wire for our 25 amp breakers. Next, let's go ahead and add the circuit breakers to the box. When I insert these circuit breakers, I really do like to put them the same way. So 25 amps is facing the same way. You're gonna see why this will come in handy in just a moment. Now go ahead and flip the box over and put in the four screws that hold the circuit breakers onto the box. Next up, we're going to install the power pull connectors. And to do this, we're gonna put the red on the left this time and the black on the right with the tongue facing down. Once we connect those, we'll put them into the box. And if they don't fit into the box, which should only go one way, check to make sure you've removed all supports. Once you get them in, it will be a firm fit. Go ahead and do it on the other end. Next up, I marked one end of these power pole connectors, and this is gonna be my auxiliary out for my radio. I did this on both sides just to prevent any kind of wrong wiring here while I do everything else. The blank end will go to the battery. Next up, we're going to cut four pieces of wire, two pieces of black wire and two pieces of red wire for our power pole connectors. On one end will be our 30 amp power pole connectors. And then on the other end is going to be where we place our ring connectors that go onto each of the breakers. And it's very simple, right here I'm installing the one that's going to the auxiliary port and I follow it out to the auxiliary port of one of the breakers. So the breaker that I'm working on now is going to be the negative breaker. One side will also go out to the battery. And these are each measured in a way where I'm not putting too much strain on any portion of the actual wire itself. I don't want the wire to rip out mid operation and potentially short something out and damage something. I'll do this for all four and it will look something like this. As we start to see it, it becomes a lot more easy to understand. We see that both of our negatives connect to the same breaker and on the other breaker, we have both of our positives. Again, keeping in mind that our auxiliary goes to auxiliary and our battery goes to battery on each side. Next, place each of the nuts on each of the posts and tighten them down, but don't over tighten them. Next up, we're gonna check for continuity between all the different posts. And I'm doing this in a closed position first. I notice continuity between the positives, but not positive to negative. That's a good thing. I don't want any shorts to occur. And then I'll go ahead and I'll trip both of these circuits so they're in an open position and we see that I lose continuity. So the circuits are working. I'll test this on the negative side of things as well. And finally, I'm gonna go ahead and place the rear portion of the case or the back cover onto this box and it's good to go. Now that back cover, it sits pretty well without any screws, although you could add screws and you could even add threaded inserts into here. In order to keep everything kind of neat and organized, I will show in another episode how we could test this to confirm that these actually trip at 25 amps. However, for right now, what I am going to do is I'm gonna open this case back up and I'm gonna super glue just a little bit of super glue on the power pole connectors to keep them in place. In another revision of this 3D printed case, those will be corrected so they could uh, screw and mount in correctly. 
After those dry, let's go ahead and put our case back on and I'll give you a couple more suggestions. This was a fun build and I think for me, it was more about a knowledge thing. However, I wanna point out that I initially made this for portable use. If you're out in the field and you trip some circuits or you blow your fuses, maybe you didn't have any extra fuses and then you can't do radio anymore. With this, you could just reset them and not ever have to worry about, did I bring fuses or not? Uh, but it is a little bit bulky at 5.4 ounces. Of course, being 5.4 ounces, it's very difficult to justify putting this in a backpack while you're hiking because an ounce is a pound when you're hiking. And yeah, just go with something nice and small like these. I got these on Amazon as well. And uh, I made these little power pole connectors so I could put in any radio if I needed to, which is always a good idea. But I'll link these below and you could always just remember to carry spare fuses. That should be part of your checklist. As, as we're in the makerspace, maybe you're just getting into radio, you're getting into the makerspace, you're learning about electronics, and I'm constantly learning things myself. But what I realized this time around is on the third iteration of this box, I still have those improvements on the power pole connectors that I've talked about already. I realized that I don't like this PowerWorks wire, 12 gauge wire, for my power pole connectors in today's scenario. I love this normally. This is great wire. However, the BN Techo silicone wire is very flexible. And what that is gonna probably do, I'll try it in the future, is when I put it in the power pole connector and then I go to the a ring connector and I place everything in place, even if there's bend, it's a little flexible so I don't put as much strain on the points where it plugs into the power pole or to that terminal post. And I think that that's gonna be an amazing, if you will, upgrade in the next iteration. I wanna mention about the white tape that I have here and I mentioned earlier about auxiliary going here. Well, now that we have it all wired up and we've assured we have one negative going to auxiliary and one positive going to auxiliary, I did that backwards. We know now that this should be all hooked up correctly. We checked it with a multimeter. It doesn't necessarily matter the way we put it in. As you can see now, this was auxiliary earlier and now it's in my battery. And if I still plug in a radio or something, it will work. Just as we see here, still resets and everything. Also want to mention that this part, I'm not a professional. So yeah, please feel free to respectively comment. But what we're talking about is why do you have two fuses in line, one on the negative and one on the positive? Well, if we think about this here for a minute, I know that pretty much everybody says the standard is you only need to put it on the positive, but I look at something like Yezu, and Yezu has already done it, so it's, well, there's one on each, the negative and the positive. And I thought that, I could be wrong about this, I thought that the aircraft and the marine fields of profession and work double fuse just like we are now. So I'm kind of following that standard, but if we really want to talk about redundancy and safety practices, I would also think that this would be in the best safety practice. After all, I would think that you had better ground fault protection if you needed it. And of course, if you do decide to be that person who does it this way, make sure that you're using, well, the same amperage on each of the circuit breakers or the fuses, whatever you choose to use. I feel like this project was a great representation of mixing a lot of different makerspace hobbies together, 3D printing, design, and of course electronics, and uh, amateur radio is in there, obviously, because it really entails all of those. So hey, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, watch out for more videos. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and have a good one.